For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice had to suffer saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you for watching our virtual Mass. Today we're celebrating the Mass uh, in honor of St. Anthony Zachariah, a priest. He was um, lived at the beginning of the Reformation, and he tried to reform the church. He founded a religious order for men and for women, and a very holy and zealous priest. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't, he didn't get the response that was needed at the time. That's why we end up today with 45,000 different denominations. But uh, he certainly tried to do his best to reform the church, and the church is always in constant need of reform. So as we come today, let us pray for the constant renewal of our church, constant conversion. And we're praying the Mass today for Steve Baker, R.I.P. So let's begin by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and Spirit of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Steve Baker. Grant, O Lord, that in the spirit of the Apostle Paul, we may pursue the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, for having learned it, St. Anthony Zacharia constantly preached your saving word in the church to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob departed from Beersheba and proceeded toward Haran. When he came upon a certain shrine, as the sun had already set, he stopped there for the night. Taking one of the stones at the shrine, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep at that spot. Then he had a dream. A stairway rested on the ground with its top reaching to the heavens and God's messengers were going up and down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him and saying, I, the Lord and the God of your forefather Abraham and the God of Isaac, the land on which you are lying, I will give to you and your descendants. These shall be as plentiful as the dust of the earth, and through them you shall spread out east and west, north and south. In you and your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. Know that I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will never leave you until I have done what I promised you. When Jacob woke from the sleep, he exclaimed, Truly, the Lord is in this spot, although, although I did not know it. In solemn wonder, he, climbed, he cried out, How awesome is this shrine! This is nothing else but an abode of God, and that is the gateway to heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head, set it on a memorial stone and poured oil on top of it. He called the site Bethel, whereas the former name of the town had been Luz. Jacob then made this vow. If God remains with me to protect me on this journey I am taking and gives me 
enough bread to eat and clothing to wear, and I come back safe to my father's house, the Lord shall be my God. This stone that I have set on a memorial stone shall be God's abode. The word of the Lord. From the 91st Psalm. In you, my God, I place my trust. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of his Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. In you, my God, I place my trust. For he will rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroying pestilence. With his pinions he will cover you, and under his wings you shall take refuge. In you, my God, I place my trust. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. In you, my God, I place my trust. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Hallelujah, according to Matthew. Lord. While Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him and so did his disciples. A woman suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the tassel of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the, house, at the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away, the girl is not dead but asleep, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and the little girl arose, and news of this spread throughout all that land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I read today's Gospel, I thought there was a misprint in the bulletin, because uh, it was this Gospel we had just this past Sunday. But last Sunday, it was from Mark. And today is from Matthew. And there's significant difference between the two, and it's always good to compare. The message is basically the same, but the little detail. Like in, in, in Mark's Gospel, she is seriously ill, and the royal official is named Jairus. You know, and, and he brings along Peter, James, and John with him, and they, they have a big part in, in it, you know. And he says, Talita, come, little girl, get up. So the, it's nice to compare. But what they have in common, these two miracles, people have great faith, and it's the touch of Christ. The royal official says, come, touch her, and she'll come back to life. Took great faith to believe that. And of course, the woman saying, if I can just touch, touch his clothing, I will get well. Matthew, uh, Matthew doesn't have that detail. That's something Mark has. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about the Catholic faith. We have a lot of touch. We, we, you know, we, we, we use things like relics. In our new church, we will have a relic of San Martin de Porres. Every Catholic altar has a relic. It's very important. And we venerate the relics of the saints because uh, even a handkerchief was able to, to work miracles in the early church. Have the handkerchief of an apostle and, and it cured them. 
So, so there's healing power by, by the touch and the cloak of Jesus and, and, and it fits right in. And every time we come to Mass, Christ touches us. He comes to us, he comes within us through the bread and the wine. Because of the consecration at the Mass, it's become the body and blood of Christ. To be aware of the great gift you get every time you come to Mass. Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. That's Jesus touching us. When we take ordinary bread, it is changed into us. But when we receive Christ, the bread of life, we're changed into him. So what an awesome gift we get every time we come. And because we come and we, we receive Jesus, we're called to go out and make disciples. Just want to point out to you the insert to the Gulf Pine Catholic this past week. Don't throw it away. Read it. The bishop has put a lot of work into it. It's the plan for the diocese, our mission on making intentional disciples. And we'll convince Father McGing of this eventually, okay? <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, the, 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 the bishop is very focused on making disciples and you all here at Most Holy Trinity are doing a great job of making disciples with the quads. Last Friday I mentioned, you know, that I had watched a couple of webinars on how to bring back the people to church. And one of the people from here came to me after Mass and said, give me four names so that I will get our quad. Each of us take one and contact them. That was music to my ears. Like if that quad can do it, why come every quad can do it and every individual does. That's what it takes. Every quad reaching out, every person reaching out and become an intentional disciple. That quad will certainly make a difference, even if they don't respond favorably. At least they know they're cared about. Those four people will know that the church cares about them. And that's what it's all about. Reaching out and making disciples. They were, uh, Jesus touched the little girl and the woman with the hemorrhage, and it made a huge difference. And when we reach out and touch others by a, maybe a phone call or a kind word, or, or, or an email, or a card. That makes a difference. Other people know what they're here. So we are called to be the hands and the feet and the voice of Jesus Christ. That's our mission. Our mission is to make disciples. Make intentional disciples. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for all the faithful departed. May God grant them eternal rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for Steve Baker, for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the successful completion of our new church, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the bishop's statement and the bishop's mission, and we pray that all of us can become intentional disciples and make disciples for Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people doing research, may they find cures for cancer, Parkinson's, kidney disease, Crohn's disease, and other catastrophic illnesses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all inactive Catholics, may they come back to the practice of the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of the Eucharist. May we always recognize Jesus in the breaking of bread. He comes inside in each of us. What a gift to get. May we know that with Jesus, all things are possible. And we pray in his holy name, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, 
It will become our spiritual dream. Bless you, God, forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all souls. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed in your altar in commemoration of Blessed Antony Zacharia, so that as you brought him glory, you may through these sacred mysteries grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom. But by your providence and even outwork in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm. You led your people Israel to the desert. Now as your church makes a pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with all the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in my eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. St. Ignatius of Antioch, ordained by Peter, a disciple of John the Evangelist, and uh, was sentenced to death in the year 110 as an 80-year-old man. And on his way to Rome, he wrote seven letters to the churches, and he, put, he has beautiful writings on the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Imagine, like, right early on, how they believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Just a short quote. Take care then to use one Eucharist so that whatever you do, you do according to God. For there is one flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ. For there is one cup in the union of his blood, one altar, as there is one bishop with the presbytery. And I desire to eat the bread of God, the heavenly bread, the bread of life, which is the flesh of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I desire to drink of God, namely his blood, which is incorruptible love and eternal life. Isn't that a beautiful statement from the year 110? You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when his one through his disciples are now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion, death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. 
Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity, among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the days whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Anthony, Zachariah, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And as we pray the Our Father this morning, let us say a special prayer for our resident singer. She's having surgery this morning, so pray everything will go well for Diane. Yes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ peace. Peace to us, peace our age. Wow. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come into my grace, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternity. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Blessed Anthony Zacharia, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for Ashton. Good morning. There's one thing that I heard that linked up all of our readings and responsorial song today, and that was trust. Just as Jacob is in the first reading, we're all on a journey. And in our responsorial song, I thought it was beautiful. In you, my God, I place my trust. 
And in our gospel, we have the official who came to Jesus. And the first thing I thought of with him being an official, it must have taken a lot of humility and just being humble in general to approach Jesus and trust him to go and rescue his daughter. And the woman suffering, it had to have taken a lot of humility also to follow him and just have trust that all she had to do was trust, to touch him. And I think that that relates a lot to us today. I know that the world can seem a bit overwhelming. There's a lot going on right now and we're going through a lot of changes. And it can seem a bit scary sometimes. But I feel that if we place trust in Jesus and in God, it opens us to be able to be helped and be able to be seen more so by him. So my challenge for you today and for this week is to just have trust in God and in Jesus. If you feel the world overwhelming you, or if you feel that everything's real dark, just say a quick prayer. God, Jesus, I trust you, please help me. And I think that you'd be surprised at just how much help you'll realize that you receive. Thank you. Very good, Ashley, got a QB med here. Father McGee had had a bad week. <laughs> at Sunday Mass, still frustrated, he began his sermon by saying, Every member of this parish is in for judgment if you don't change your ways. A man at the back in the church began to laugh. So McGee repeated his warning, and the man continued to laugh. After Mass, Father McGee asked the man why he was laughing. He said, because I don't belong to this parish. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> and may Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle us for fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit. 